Hello folks and welcome back to a rather wet Devon countryside. As you might be able to tell, uh, we've gone from last week's really cold, bitterly cold, minus figures and the snow on the ground, um, to damp and miserable. I've taken a chance with a break in the weather today to do a short little video. Um, this one's not a Workshop Wednesday, it's not a Project MGB, it is another project though. You might have noticed behind me a red tractor has arrived in the yard. Now a few followers on social media, on Facebook and Instagram etc, you'll have seen some comments about this appearing. So let's have a quick look around the latest restoration project tractor that has arrived here at Vintage Automobilia. So a new arrival this week at Vintage Automobilia. It appeared locally on a marketplace, um, advertised for sale. Unfortunately, the chap had lost his storage and his wife said no as well. That doesn't help when the missus is pestering you to sell something. Um, he really didn't want to sell it, unfortunately, but we have promised him that we'll send him some pictures and he'll get to have a look at it when it's done up as well. So it is in safe hands. Um, thank you for selling it to us if you're watching this. Of course, anyone that knows uh, myself and the family know that we're a little bit into vintage agricultural items as well as the motoring memorabilia. Uh, we have our own collection of the motoring stuff as well, uh, but we have a few vintage tractors and we do use them around the farm as well. So behind me here is the latest acquisition. It's a 1953 David Brown 25. The 25 was introduced in around 1953 and production lasted for about five years through to 1958. This is the C model in effect, which is the petrol TVO. A 25D was also available, which as the name suggests was the diesel model. 25 being 25 horsepower and it was introduced to basically capture some of the market that was being lost to Ferguson. The old grey Fergie TE20 is of course an absolute old favourite. Everyone knows what a grey Fergie is really. Um, and the crop master, which was being made by David Brown, was just a little bit too expensive. So they skinned it down. They took away the large mug guards, the big fender around the dashboard, took away the dual seat, and basically made a slightly more budget model to, that could, they could sell cheaper, basically, and compete with that market that they were losing. So this tractor really is in very good condition. It's been barn stored for most of its life, it has sadly been overpainted over the original red at some point years and years ago. So there's an argument to say that this could stay as an oily rag. Just wash it off, give it a coat of oil and take it to a tractor show next week. Not that there are any. Lovely factory red here and the slightly pinkier top coat where it's faded. Um, it's been done years ago. The other side says that because it's been done like this, um, then you could restore it as well. If it was definitely factory paint and all original untouched, we wouldn't be painting this. So, fantastic grill on the front here, undented, um, which is a bit unusual. The, all the lines and the way it fits together are perfect as well. We have the radiator cap, these fantastic big bits of brass on here have a tendency of going missing at tractor shows, um, which is a little bit sad, but so we've taken that off and kept that safe. Obviously the exhaust needs replacing. It's got its original side screens on the tractor as well, but they're a little bit bent and warped. So we're going to need to do some panel work there. And also one of the catches has broken and it's just the little bar hanging down, as you can see there. Um, so we'll get some new catches probably, or we'll try and repair those, we'll see. But uh, these side screens need a little bit of just fettling. You can see where they're a little bit out of alignment and bent. So we'll straighten those all up before we paint them. It's also got a distributor in here. Some earlier tractors had magneto ignition, um, then they changed to the distributor. So that's all there and working. We'll change the plugs and leads and things and just give it a general tidy up and service. Battery box on the side here. It's 12 volt ignition, but positive earth still. Um, starter motor, previous owner had had reconditioned, but it stopped working. Um, the last time this week we tried to start this it 
was completely dead. There was nothing. We could start it on the starting handle, but there was nothing at the starter motor. So we need to take a look at that. We will be doing complete electrics and everything anyway. This will be receiving a complete new loom, regulator box, um, bits and pieces like that anyway, just so that it's refreshed. I mean, 1953, it's 60, 70 years old anyway. Old loom, it's probably due replacement. There's been a few nests and things in here in the past. Even the remains of the pull cord for the rad blind. And this just pulls out and clips on there, pulls against the spring or you drop it right back, like that. This old string went all the way through to the front, down through this tube here, so we'll be reinstating all of that as well. Handbrake mechanism, very simple, pull it up. Start a knob. The tyres have seen better days. The rears are not too bad, but the fronts have gone completely. So this will receive a full set of tyres. David Brown, why David Brown? How does that fit with classic cars and motoring memorabilia? Well, think of a English classic supercar manufacturer whose model names have included those little initials for many years. DB3, 5, 6, 7, 11, it goes on. Yes, the DB in Aston Martin stands for David Brown. Now, Mr. David Brown owned the company for many years. He is credited as the savior of Aston, really, um, through some difficult years. And they manufactured the gearboxes that are in many of the cars. DB5s and possibly 6s have the DB Roses logo on the steering wheel horn button, which is also the logo found on the grill front of many of the later David Brown tractors. The biggest bonus of buying this tractor was finding out that it's actually a really early tractor. It is a 1953 David Brown 25. And when we checked out the serial number, it's number 50. Yes, this is 0050. Now, it makes sense. Obviously, the serial number started at 0001. And that tractor is still in existence in preservation. Uh, this is a photograph of it at a tractor show a few years back. So to find one that was built this early, within the first week or two of production, I expect, is really quite something. Production numbers for the 25 petrol model were around 21,000. The diesel model, a few more, at around 23,500. Give or take a few. I won't quote the exact numbers because I found them on the internet and to be honest I don't know exactly how correct they are but that just gives you an idea that the diesel was a little bit more popular or certainly on par with the petrol making this a little bit rarer. Obviously from a modern collector's point of view a diesel would be easily used still on today's small holdings but a petrol is just a little bit less smelly and smoky and a little nicer to use especially if you want to just use this around your pony paddock and keep it in a barn next to your Aston Martin. So looking around the other side of the tractor here, the throttle lever has been extended. Someone's welded a bit of a bar onto that and extended that. I have managed to find an original replacement from a friend of mine who's broken a couple of tractors. It's the little short original with a little brass knob on the end as the handle. Here's the dashboard and the switches and the gauges. A couple of these gauges need replacing, so we'll sort that out. And the serial number tag with that very important 0050. A selection of spanners and tools were found down the side of the engine. You can see that the sides of the block in here in the frame make really good little toolboxes. We have got a selection of tools we found that we just put on the footplate for a minute. A couple of those might be original spanners. We need to clean them up and find out. Um, if they are original from a David Brown toolkit, we'll obviously leave them with the tractor. This is the early air filter setup on here. Some of the later tractors had a little mushroom top on there. This is basically a heat control. It takes a pipe straight from around the manifold to keep warm air coming in. Let's lift this side panel off. You see it's had a new fan belt there and it's all in remarkably good condition really. There's the carb, the heat shield on the manifold. 
obviously it's a vaporizing manifold to allow it to burn TVO or kerosene as well as petrol. You start it on petrol and once it's warmed up, switch it over. And on the top here, you'll see the twin fuel tank caps. That of course is for one small tank for petrol, one for TVO or tractor vaporizing oil, as it's also known. Um, a lot of people these days will run on kerosene. Um, you can still buy TVO, but you need license, I think, to mix it now because of various legality reasons. Cap here is for petrol and the front one, the larger tank, is for your TVO. There's the sediment bowl here and that's the changeover tap. You'll see the two lines coming in there. So once it's warmed up on petrol, you'd switch the tap over to run it on the vaporizing oil. Seat lifts up, there's a rubber bung missing from under there, so we'll get a new pair of those fitted. And there's another little toolbox under the seat. And there's a load of stuff in there. We'll give that a good clean out and see what we can find in there. Most of the tin work we think we can save. We could buy new rear wings and bits like that. Um, we'll have a look. We don't think they're that bad. We'd rather save them if we can, but it depends how much welding they need. Hmm. Don't think it's meant to do that. I don't think that pot is going to do a lot to stop the rain getting in there. Um, we might need to cover that up. Original tax disc there, the last one from 1971. So this is it, this is the latest acquisition here. If you've been following us for a while, you might remember the Porsche diesel tractor that we restored last year. That tractor came in from Germany and it was with a dealer of vintage tractors and a friend of ours. Um, he had a couple for sale, we bought that one. It got a full restoration here with many new parts, complete new wiring loom, all resprayed, new tires, the works. This one is probably going to have a similar restoration and end up the same way. Um, many classic car collectors, if they've got a big enough collection, are into other things as well. The petrol pumps, the signs are obvious, but also tractors. We know a few guys who've got that Tree Porsche, Lamborghini tractor, and they wanted David Brown to sit next to their Aston Martin. So this one, it's just going to be perfect. It's a really quite original tractor. There's loads of features on this that would be missing on something that had not had quite as good and a dry life. Um, I'm told it was kept in a barn for many, many years, if not all of its life. Hence why it's in the condition it's in, and so little of the tin work is rotten or tatty. But it just goes to show where this has had such low owners and a good history. It's been looked after. So keep an eye out on our YouTube channel for updates on the David Brown. We're going to be bringing you some regular videos alongside other projects and the MG and the memorabilia and the Workshop Wednesdays when we can um, with updates on the David Brown. Not sure how long it's going to take to do this one. Um, it's a little bit of a on the side project at the moment. So keep watch this space. So there we are, just a short little video with a quick look at our new acquisition here. Thanks for watching, keep an eye out for regular updates coming as soon as possible on the restoration of this little tractor.